Today I'm going to go to the grocery store for the first time in over two years and I'm going to pick up some groceries with a $50 budget. The price of food is rising across the world and it's getting really hard to make ends meet for a lot of us, especially those with families to feed. A lot of my favorite foods are just not as accessible anymore. But of course, my family still needs to eat and I want to do my best to meet my family's nutritional needs with a bit of extra planning on my part. So for context, $50 Canadian is about $38 to $39 USD and I'm going to be attempting to feed my family of four. So my goal today is to really focus on getting a few things in the following categories. Um, protein, produce, and grains. And I also want to try to leave a little bit of wiggle room for like one or two maybe kind of fun non-essential foods because let's be real, I still have to enjoy my week of food. So normally I buy all my groceries online using grocery delivery apps and I've actually been shopping this way since well before the pandemic when I became a mom because you know I just found that like that one hour or two going to the grocery store became just so much more valuable to me and I just I would rather use that time to spend time with my family or get something else done around the house but I literally have not been in this grocery store where I used to go all the time since like well before March 2020 so it's gonna be interesting to see how the experience has changed. Now, I do actually find that I probably save a lot of money shopping on kind of grocery apps because, you know, I find that the apps will feed you all of your essentials or all of your like go-to items. So I don't feel like I'm tempted by all the marketing of all the different new products that are often more expensive that I actually see visually when I go to the store. This way, I'm really only buying the things that I know that I need because they are on my grocery list and not just looking pretty at the end of the aisle. Okay, so let's go in. And we are shooting on our iPhone right now because we want to make sure we're a little more discreet. Come on. So for produce options, I like to have something that I can do either cooked or serve raw if you want to do like salads or just snacking. So let's see what we can get for a good price. So carrots are a great option because I can serve them cooked for my kiddos and also raw for salads. And they're only about 30 cents per hundred grams. So a really great option. So for another raw veg, cabbage is awesome. It's so cheap. This cabbage head will literally feed like one. So we love it cooked and we also love it in slots. Okay, so generally speaking, root vegetables are great nutritious bang for your buck. Potatoes are a staple in my house. My kids love them pretty much anyway, so we're gonna pick up a few for the whole thing. Bananas are pretty much always inexpensive all year round, which we love. Um, they're technically never in season here in Canada, but they're always in season because we love them. We always have at least a big bunch of bananas at the ready to eat throughout the week. Bonus points for the Marvel sticker. That always goes over well with kids. And me. And Inevitable. There are so many different breads on the market now. Um, what I always look for are the words whole grain in the ingredient list. And often the store bakeries version is one of the cheapest. So that's what we're getting today. On just $50, I feel like it's going to be a week of vegetarian eats just to save some cash. But if I were to splurge on some kind of meat or poultry, I'd go for a whole piece of poultry, like a whole chicken, rather than the individual pieces that have already been butchered with the bones out and the skin off. You can always do this work at home and it's going to save you so much cash. Oh my gosh. I have not had Viva Puffs since I was a little girl. My grandmother used to keep these in the freezer and they were like one of the most exciting things to get to go over to grandma's house to have a frozen beef puff. How much are they? Two for six bucks. So hot tip, if you didn't know this already, this is gonna change your shopping life but a lot of different brands have different size and shape containers, which can make it very confusing and difficult to compare prices. So you wanna actually look more carefully at the price per 100 grams. That's gonna help you compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges and help you find the best price no matter what size the container is. So 
So this one is a dollar per 100 grams. The mixed nuts is 250 per 100 grams. And if you go with the larger container, we're looking at just 54 cents per 100 grams. So it seems like it's a no brainer. So there's no question that you can save a lot of money just buying your pulses, like your beans and legumes, dry. But you also have to factor in whether or not it's realistic for you to do that. And I just know myself, I am never gonna think ahead and take the time to soak or cook those beans and lentils ahead of time when I'm having a really soak the beans and cook the beans for a long period of time. So I always keep a few cans of beans and lentils in my pantry, which I just feel is a lot better use of my money than to buy dried and let it collect dust. Buying a big sack of rice like this is a great way to save money, but I don't have the budget for like $30 of rice today, so I'm gonna save that for another time, but it is a great little tip. Even when tomatoes are in season here, nothing beats the flavor of canned. Mayonnaise is not on my shopping list because you know it sucks. You can totally splurge and get whole grain pasta, and yes, you will get a little bit more fiber, but at the end of the day, it's always way more expensive, and the fiber difference is honestly negligible. We're talking about four grams of fiber versus six. Just add a vegetable. I forgot how cold it is in the grocery store. See these ones? Those are my favorite. Those are right my there. favorites. Fruit by the Foot Starburst, all pink. <gasps> I thought they got rid of Dunkaroos in Canada. They, I thought they did too, but here we are, reunited at last. It seems like it's meant to be, other than the fact that it's six bucks, or you can get a single Dunkaroo for two bucks. Just one? No, I know a lot of influencers like to hate on peanut butter and almond butter has such a health halo, but the fact is peanuts actually have the highest amount of protein of most of the nuts out there on the market today. So peanut butter is actually a really, really great option if you're on a budget. The Canadian in me is dying to taste it. Oats are the ultimate cheap and cheerful breakfast. A bag of oats will go so much further than any of those box cereals will. If your family drinks milk like mine does, the four liter bagged version comes in at half the price as the two liter carton, so it's a great deal. Can you tell me your Canadian without saying you're Canadian? I'm sorry, I don't speak Canadian. Let me get someone over here. Mike, we have a Canadian. Brown, white, it actually doesn't matter. That's just the breed of the hen. So get whatever egg is within your budget. I'm bringing the freezer aisle. Didn't bring my parka. This ain't for me. So for throwing veg into casseroles or pastas or stir fries or smoothies, frozen is the way to go. So if you compare frozen greens to fresh, you're looking at about $4 per 100 grams for the fresh versus, versus 90 cents per 100 grams for the frozen. Such a better deal and because they're in the freezer, they last longer so nothing goes to waste. I feel like if I lived in California, I could get some really great deals on fresh berries, but even when they're in season here in Canada, frozen tends to be a greater bang for your buck. Frozen produce is actually often more nutritious than fresh because it's been flash frozen at the peak of perfection, so it locks in those nutrients so that they're not lost in transit. So I did promise myself that I would make room in my budget for something that I was like really excited about that maybe isn't exactly essential. And that, of course, is gonna be ice cream. No! Now, Chapman's is the least expensive at $3.99 for a container, but I don't love it. So I'm not sure what the point is on me spending four bucks on something that I'm not gonna be jazzed about eating. So let's take a look at another alternative that's maybe a little more expensive, but I'm a little more excited about. 
I don't know what elk crossing is, but it sounds pretty Canadian, and that's my style. This is gonna be the most Canadian grocery haul you've ever seen. Americans, this is what's up. You guys know I'm obsessed with hemp herbs and chia and flax as really great nutritious sprinkles, but wheat bran is also a really great inexpensive source of protein and fiber and B vitamins. So it's great for adding into smoothies or putting on your oatmeal, yogurt, or whipping up into pancakes or other baked goods. Ultimately, I ended up a bit over budget, which I think just goes to show how challenging these times really are. I know that for a lot of you, that extra $8 would just not be possible. So I do acknowledge my privilege in this. But if you're in a season of life where maybe you're relying on more processed foods or you can't eat as many vegetables as you'd like, have some empathy for yourself. Know that you are doing an amazing job because I used all the tools in my dietitian toolbox and ultimately it was clearly very tough. So these are not easy times. 58 bucks, not bad. And we've got a few selections each of our grains, our produce, and our protein. So I wanna give you guys some ideas on what I could do with this haul. We can do some oatmeal with wheat bran in there for some extra fiber made with our milk, add in some peanut butter, and lots of fruit on top. Super simple breakfast. We've got some scrambled eggs, some peanut butter toast, and a banana on the side. We could do a smoothie with our milk, fruit, nut butter, and a little wheat bran. We can do a pasta with our white beans and tomatoes, some spinach and carrots. Here we can do a peanut sauce cold noodle salad with cabbage, carrots, and some peanuts on top. Add in a few spices and we can do baked beans on toast. If you've got mayo or yogurt in the fridge, we could do a egg salad sandwich with a little cabbage slaw on top. Top. Well, I wouldn't do that, but some of you might. And we can do a quick little slaw with some hard boiled eggs, some beans, and some nuts on top. And a perfectly complete meal, just as is. Well, I call that a success. I mean, we didn't quite meet the $50 goal post, but I'd say the ice cream splurge was worth it. I would love to hear some of your money saving grocery tips and hacks in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you'd like to see more fun vlogs like this. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.